sometimes the emotionality or the spiritual qualities of the work. And I feel like Marietta kind of goes through that and brings us back to those emotional qualities or those spiritual qualities. And that's what I get out of her work, and particularly I guess out of her balloon pieces, um, is the sense of that kind of intense spiritual emotion uh, that is a little less about maybe showing off or less about, you know, look at what a great painter I am. I'm not saying she's not a great painter and that you aren't technically superb surfaces, but that um, it's more than that. And that's why I've been drawn to her work when I work together, I think. So that's just by kind of by way of introduction. Um, well, one thing that interests me is um, that John came to my studio when we agreed to do this show here. And he chose a lot of different work from various times. And this is actually like a a small retrospective of the last nine years or so of places I've visited and works that came out of that. And the blue work did come out of a residency that I had at Crater Lake. That's where the blue began. And um, I had, a, a, it was the centennial of Crater Lake and they were having artists come in in a museum exhibit uh, in, in that resulted from that. And I just woke up and I saw this blue all the time, every day. It was the deepest, bluest lake uh, in the North America. So it really just drew me in. And what I liked about it, besides being totally mesmerized, was that it felt like there was just no obstacles to it, that I could walk into it and just be with it and really kind of swim around there not literally, but uh, figuratively swim around in that blue and just see all of the um, things that resonated from that. And um, so the blue began there, but then it evolved into, as John was saying, going to a residency in um, Scotland and seeing the totally different blues and the nuances of rays and the, the uh, storm clouds coming in. I was in the highlands. And then also, you know, places like Alaska. So I was interested when John came and started pulling this work from different places. And I thought, oh my god, what is going to happen? But I trust John, like, totally, because um, he has curated my work before. And I just said, I'll just yield. I'll just relax into this and see what happens. So we brought all this work down. And so maybe you should even say how you just pulled this work uh, process from the studio. <laughs> uh, right, well, there was an awful lot to choose from. I mean, it was very prolific. So there were plenty of pieces to choose from all sorts of environments. Not so loud. This Not is so John's loud. son. <laughs> so he's, he's so going to help us out here. <laughs> <laughs> he's critiquing the critic. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think it was just the, the sense of all of these blue squares um, and the incredible variety that she managed to get out of that uh, concept. I mean, so we're going to put together a show of 60 blue squares. Um, that sounds potentially pretty deadly. Um, but the fact that there is an incredible variety, an incredible uh, number of responses to, those, to, that, to that concept um, was what interested me. Um, and that those are then related to different places and different times and different experiences that she's had. Um, and that, of course, um, you know, ultimately these are very experiential paintings. I mean, I think the words can go so far in it's kind of describing their possibilities or what they do. Um, but ultimately, they have to be experienced. And I think certain ones, uh, for me at least, you know, I have my favorites. Um, certain uh, ones are, are become very rich experiences over time, um, and in some ways, somewhat indescribable experiences. And I think that's that's part of the point of this work is to bring is to say you can take this, you know, formal construct of this blue square, which we can describe in words, um, and yet get so many different uh, emotional and spiritual responses out of it. It's almost uh, empirical in terms of how it somehow proves, um, you know, the presence of those emotional or spiritual realities, right? Which I think in some ways are, our, are always our basis, 
um, but particularly in this culture where we emphasize empiricism, uh, tend to be ignored. I mean, there's something irrational about these paintings, and yet this is a very, very rational format. So, so that's what interested me, was going around and picking out all of these blue squares and finding that range. There's an incredible breadth uh, to uh, what is, you know, are very limited parameters. But of course, as artists, we all know that experience, that in some ways, the more you limit your parameters, the richer and richer the work can become. And I think that's what's happened here. That is absolutely one of the challenges in the work. And that's why I think I've sustained it for so long. Um, is because it's like, where else can I push it? Where else can I take it? How else can I use the, the um, formats and also just the texture of the paint and the different mediums and everything? Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that, that um, challenge of how far can I go? And um, I think some of you, and I'm going to get back to you in a second, but some of you have observed that some of the paintings have edges. And um, I think that began early on. And I was explaining to someone earlier that as I would layer the paint, and these paintings have maybe, you know, I don't know, they're all individual, but they have maybe 20 or 30 layers of paint on them. And, you know, I'm standing in between and, um, and then putting another layer on and, and sanding. So that's why you can see through to different colors that exist in the work. But it, some of the edges were actually created because I would scrape the painting as I came to a layer and scrape it to the edge. And then I would put another layer on. So some of the colors that you see in the edges are actually layered into the work itself. And um, uh, it's just a way it also that I, I went through that period of transition where I could do these surfaces and still feel that I had this oozing quality of the oil paint because it was, it's, it's been a, an exercise in restraint for me not to just splash paint on, but to see how I can make these surfaces to be how I want them to feel in the end without um, just going like this. So, you um, had, had a painting one time called uh, Incrustations. Yes. So I thought uh, about that painting and uh, thought that you were putting some crustaceans, incrustations. Oh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So the other thing that interested me was that when all the work was here and John came down and started to figure out how to make the exhibit, and I was watching him because I just yielded to John. I really didn't want to interfere. I wanted to see what he was going to do with this. And it was fascinating. And some of us were here and, and watching. And you know, he would lay out the work and he would have an idea and then he would look at that and he said, no, OK. And that took maybe an hour. And then he would lay out the work again on the floor and look at it again and say, well, that doesn't work to make the transition down to there. And so that process really intrigued me to see how he was going to make all this work work. Because I didn't want it to look like it was a group show. you know, And, and there were many artists who created this work. And so, um, how did you come to this final configuration? Oh, yeah, well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's always a challenge. I mean, and there are, as similar as this work is, it's also very disparate. Um, and so, initially, my idea was, I, I've been in Marietta's studio, and she's working on a series of green paintings now. Yeah, that's um, true. Kind of squares and rectangles and are there some other shapes there? there? Yeah. yeah, other shapes. Um, and those were all up on the main wall in our studio in a kind of grouping. Um, looked a little bit like maybe some of, you know, the individual kind of oval or horizontal compositions that Montreal had at one point, but kind of almost as an installation of all of these different shapes. And so I kind of, I like that idea and I like the way that they, those pieces look. And at some point we'll show those. Um, and so I thought I wanted to do that with the pieces here. And so I got a bunch of them here in this room and started to play around with you know, how wild or crazy could maybe one wall get. 
Um, and I was trying that and kind of coming up with some options, but it was leaving holes in other places. Sort of like if I pull something from everything in here, then I didn't have it to spread out. And so I started to realize that it didn't need to be you know, just this one wall, um, that in fact I could treat this room that way to some degree, and maybe even the whole space um, as that kind of grouping, and start to think about it in that way, keeping some pieces that obviously you know, complement each other or are very similar together, and then also breaking it up with other pieces. Um, and so I tried to imagine then that this became the, that one wall, that one wall I'd seen in her studio, but the whole space kind of took on that quality. Um, and then what also started to happen? Yeah, thank you. So did you take into consideration also, I mean, we have uh, limitations as a gallery space. Uh, we have doors and glass windows and squares. And, oh, yeah. So did that come into play as oh, yeah. your uh, design? Yeah, no, I always think about that. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, I, I'm the uh, curator for the community college up in Santa Fe these days, and I work study students, and I always tell them, we always talk about the space that things are going into. And in fact, my you know secret hint to that, my secret curator's hint is um, that the is how much the floor matters. Actually, um, I kind of centered this piece on the opening here, right, or close to center. Um, I had it more towards the center of this wall, but in fact, I felt like that started to shut down or do something weird to this corner, right? So it's all these subtle little plays, especially when you're talking about. Kind of minimalist or near minimalist work. Um, so yeah, a lot of what I think about is is what's happening on the floor actually, because I think that's actually you know even with work. Is